can't stop this. Hello and welcome back to VGC. You're watching our review of The Last of Us Part 2. This review was initially written by John Bales and transcribed for video purposes by me, Stephen McInerney. I have to finish it. It seems fitting that The Last of Us returns only at the end of another console generation. As with the first instalment, the latest in Naughty Dog's survival horror saga is among the last of its era, a kind of grand finale for the current PlayStation. Perhaps because of this, it's showing off a little too much, with a visualisation of a post-apocalyptic America that can feel too big and dramatic. But it is an extraordinary achievement, technically unmatched and smart in its player engagement than anything the studio has created before. All right. You all know the drill. Set four years after the events of the first game, main characters Joel and Ellie are part of a flourishing community in Wyoming that's managed to shelter from the infected, which are zombies created by a brain invading fungus. <laughs> of course, this can't last, and soon enough, a terrible event, and don't worry, there's no plot spoilers here, triggers a new journey primarily focused on Ellie. Please stop! As with the first game and Naughty Dog's Uncharted series, what immediately impresses is the detail in the characters. The animation as Ellie converses with those around her is embellished with meaningful glances and subconscious mannerisms, and their incidental chatter as they explore is perfectly pitched in response to the unfolding action. It's still a little jarring that everyone shares similar laid-back speech styles and humour, but the naturalness of the interactions is far above that in most AAA titles. You'll probably die from hypothermia from wearing canvas sneakers in the snow. I am wearing boots today. Even more remarkable is the game's depiction of a decaying Seattle, where a significant chunk of the story takes place. The crumbling skylines are often stunning, while the interiors of its countless explorable locations are packed with tiny visual flourishes, from cracking shards of glass on the floor to smudges on windows or dust settled on a guitar. Together, the character and world design make every building worth exploring, not merely to loot supplies, but to see how it bears witness to life before and after the outbreak. This is a game experience from the perspective of youth, who only know about the old society from their elders or salvaged cultural artefacts. Through their eyes, the everyday trinkets, toys, murals and abandoned photos in a home, cafe, pet shop or theatre become wonders. Rather than nostalgia, there's a sense here of an alien civilization that deserves pity for its innocence and complacency. At the same time, the whole experience of The Last of Us Part 2 feels more organic than before. This is literally the case with the environments, as human constructions are increasingly subsumed by greenery, but it spreads throughout your interactions with locations too. The rigid and repetitive structures of previous Naughty Dog games are far less obtrusive here. For most part, this remains a linear journey, divided into discrete chunks with only one major section early on that really allows free exploration. Yet the joins between combat exploration and story scenes are more blurred than before. Telltale signs of an upcoming combat section, such as conspicuous cover points, are more naturally integrated into the scenery. Roving patrols in some areas, along with a few good old-fashioned jump scares, ensure the pacing doesn't become predictable. Ellie! <laughs> Navigation is more fluid too, with Ellie's agile frame well suited to quick traversal. A lot of old, well-rehearsed Naughty Dog routines, like boosting up companions or grabbing onto fragile ledges, are present, but they're used sparingly. Puzzles are more spread out, with a large array of elements involved, including some neat physics conundrums with ropes and cables. It's never really taxing, as long as you're mildly observant, but it does help you feel like you're existing in a functioning reality. <laughs> The core challenge is of course in dealing with hostiles, whether it's teams of human survivors hunting you down or nests of the hideous infected. Tent stealth is again the main ingredient, as enemies will quickly surround you once they have your position. Staying out of sight and sneaking up on individuals for a quick knife kill is often the safest way to proceed, but you also have recourse to distraction items, a bow for long range silent assassinations or molotov cocktails, mines and a variety of guns for noisier confrontations. This is all largely familiar, but part two offers enough variety to stop encounters becoming routine. There's greater complexity in the layouts in many sections, often with more tactical verticality than before, or different means of cover, and in outdoor locations it's now possible to sneak past patrols and escape without incident. The two main rival groups of humans you have to deal with, the wolves and the scars, are also tactically distinct prospects, and the infected have new tricks up their fungal coated sleeves. It all makes for some stunning set pieces. A few of these are tightly choreographed chase sequences. Others, such as a Resident Evil-like crawl through a ruined, pitch-dark hotel teeming with infected, are more understated yet equally exhilarating. 
Throwing enemies of different types together also makes for some wonderfully chaotic and unscripted scenes. Even so, some of the stealth mechanics are showing their age and tread a fine line between tension and frustration. Human patrols can be large, and in enclosed spaces it's easy to get pinned in a corner, unable to track all the lines of sight scanning the area. Progress isn't necessarily difficult, but it isn't always satisfying either. If you end up relying on the generous checkpoints and trial and error, or warily give up on the silent approach and reach for the shotgun. Thankfully, later parts of the game encourage more offensive play, and it's a welcome release. The bigger problem with having so many human enemies is its effect on the game's narrative themes in relation to violence. The disconnect between the story and the killing is a perennial issue for Naughty Dog, and their attempts to confront it here only serve to highlight it more. The disturbing gurgles as you stab someone in the neck, or the anguished cry as their friends discover their body, are supposed to add impact to your actions, but are so frequent that they turn into macabre voyeurism. The story wants us to examine its damaged characters as they look for resolution in anger, with the implication that violence isn't the answer, but for much of the game it is, and the last of the two can feel like it's reveling in the brutality. I wish things were different. Ellie! But they ain't. Other aspects of the narrative are fascinating, especially its structure as it takes unexpected turns to gradually reveal the best and worst of humanity in the different sides of a conflict. It's also commendable how Naughty Dog refuses to rush its plot, giving its characters and scenarios time to breathe, but it is a little too long, with too many big moments that fail to stick in the memory as they dissolve into more bloody violence. Personal tales are somewhat swamped by the scale of events, and it loses some of the intimacy of the first game. It seems that Naughty Dog doesn't know when to stop pushing forward. This ambition has borne a game of incredible energy and unprecedented quality, but at the cost of some coherency and, according to reports from employees, a punishing work culture. In every way, The Last of Us 2 is the grand culmination and skillful refinement of all the studio has done in the last decade or so. Hopefully, by the last of the next generation, it will have found more effective ways to communicate its themes, and more reasonable ways to bring them to fruition. Naughty Dog has taken everything to the limit to create The Last of Us 2, the PS4, its design template and its staff. In some respects, it's gone too far, but the results are undeniably spectacular, and this is the studio's best game yet. Do they just get to get away with this? Guys, thanks for watching our review of The Last of Us 2. Do let us know down in the comments what you make of this review. And make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to this channel and check out our recent review of Disintegration on the PlayStation 4. For now, have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon for another video. Not at any cost.